Variable fonts are, in a nutshell, font files that have settings you can change as you please to either subtly or dramatically modify the font's appearance. So through these settings, which are called axes, you can take a single font file and create the kind of variation you could previously only get through using multiple font files. So for example, with a regular font family, if you wanted a light, normal, and bold weight version, you would have to use three different font files. But with a variable font that has a weight axis, you can adjust the weight via CSS to get the light, normal, and bold looks from a single file. Now you have the same looks, but with a third of the load time for your font files. So previously you would have had to cap your inclusion of font files to just a few files so that your load speed didn't take too much of a hit. So typically, only one or two font families and a couple of variations on each. But now with variable fonts, you can have as many variations on a font as you want with no additional load speed impact. So if you went to Google fonts and you wanted to use the Libra Sans font and you wanted to use all nine weights, Google fonts would flag you with a warning that your load time is going to be slow. But if you wanted all nine weights with the same font, but using the variable font version, you could just go for it. It wouldn't add anything extra to your site, but a few lines of CSS to recreate those nine weights. And now we're looking at just one font file versus nine font files. As far as style variability, it doesn't just stop there. You aren't restricted to using only the kind of font variations that you're used to, like normal and bold weight or italic style. First up, any axis can have its value set anywhere along a sliding range rather than being restricted to a few fixed values. So if you wanted a weight that was somewhere in between normal and bold, then you could have it. Or if you wanted your italics to lean just a little bit less, then you can have it. Or if you wanted your letter widths to be just a tiny bit more, then you can have that too. You're not stuck in a box with variable font axes. You can fine tune your settings to exactly what you need. But it still keeps getting better from there. Variable fonts don't only have axes like the weight and italics and width settings that we're already familiar with. They can have any axes the font designer cares to think of. Here's a font with axes that control a drop shadow. Here's one that gives you control over the gaps in a stencil style. And here's another one with a long list of custom axes for massive design style variability of all different kinds. Variable fonts look set to make a big impact on how we handle typography as web designers. They'll allow us to achieve much greater diversity and control while simultaneously reducing our load speeds. And they'll allow us to branch out creatively in our typography in a way that was technically impossible before. To get you started with variable fonts, we put together a course that guides you through all the most important facets of how they work, gets you set up with the tools that you're going to need, steps you through coding the CSS that controls your variable fonts, and shows you how to create fallbacks for browsers that don't yet have support. Head to Tuts Plus and check out Up and Running with Variable Fonts to learn more.